Well, happy Wednesday to all of you joining us today. It's one o'clock. This is our scheduled time for our webinar today. So I want to begin by welcoming all of you to this fourth part of our five-part webinar series. I'm Paul Klassen. I'll be your host today. So once again, welcome. I also want to welcome our panelists. If they could just uh, unmute themselves and bring their video on, that would be fantastic. We have Sean from Universal Access. Welcome, Sean. Thanks, Paul. Excited yeah. to chat. Awesome. Uh, Chuck over at Home Care Assistance. Welcome, Chuck. Thank you, Paul. Very excited to uh, come on this journey with you. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, great. I know you guys were part of our uh, seminar back in February, so great to have you guys join us again here today on this webinar series. Kind of a deeper dive, but uh, really quickly, before we get started today, uh, if, you, if you all watch the video on your webinar invitation, you already kind of know that my childhood heroes were my grandparents. For you, those of you that have heard this story before on the webinar, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> I need to kind of give you the, the background, the backstory. But uh, my childhood, but the, the childhood heroes uh, of mine were my grandparents for a variety of reasons. But then to see them later, first my grandfather, then my grandmother suffer from Alzheimer's. I believe she had Parkinson's, and to see their level of care commitment, it just really impacted me. And then just to see the devastating loss of, of complete loss of mobility really impacted me. And decades later, two of my nephews developed debilitating illnesses as well. And again, I saw their suffering, their lack of uh, or their loss of mobility, also saw the caregiver needs of my family in retrofitting their homes to give them the best quality of life they could provide. It just it just was those those impacts, both of early childhood and then adult experiences that really shaped how after 25 years in the upscale renovation market here in Calgary, we launched an accessible division called My Lifetime Home. And that was early in 2020 on the eve of Valentine's Day. And of course, Sean and uh, Chuck joined us at that seminar back in February. So that's the backstory, kind of explains my passion around this topic and why we're here today. We just felt that uh, from that panel of experts seminar back in, in, uh, in February, it just required a deeper dive. And of course, then all of that changed uh, uh, as COVID kind of hit. So that was prior to COVID. Uh, we kind of landed, uh, you know, a month later with, with the onset of COVID here in Canada. But that packed out audience back in February really kind of set the stage for, for this session here today. The engagement that night was fabulous. The interest was great. Um, and, and it just, Later, as I said, a month later, just a mere month later, COVID hit, and we just all realized from that panel that we needed to uh, to really do a deeper dive. And, and part of this today is the education and just providing options for all of us who are aging gracefully. And I'll put myself in in that. I'm not getting old. I'm just aging gracefully. So here we are uh, today with our fourth of our five part webinar series to hopefully provide you and your family uh, with an objective education and your options. We encourage you to invite your friends to register as we start uh, webinar number four with all of our panelists here today. So on today's webinar, we'll be covering a few topics that present concerns to those that are considering remaining in their home to make it their lifetime home. And those concerns include uh, concerns around resale, first of all. So how will my home be affected and how can I offset that concern if I do retrofit it to be accessible? And then if I do re choose to remain in my own home, what options do I have with both Alberta Health Services, private health care for my home, and what do those cost comparisons look like? So we're going to be doing a deep dive into that with Chuck. So really looking forward to that. So Sean's going to talk about the resale side and, and uh, Chuck on the, on the private health care versus AHS. And finally, uh, you know, how are the other needs for upkeep and maintenance of my home dealt with if I choose to have my house become my lifetime home versus moving to a villa or senior care center. So we're gonna cover that uh, all the way through our, our webinar here today. And I know our panelists will be sharing some actual case studies that are gonna show you how the concerns I just mentioned can be addressed and what do I do? You know, it, it kind of these, these panels will be liter are literally living their solutions in their day-to-day -day lives as well as their chosen professions. So you're all in for some great information today. Uh, as you can see, if you've been joining us through our five-part webinar, we're covering a broad range of topics, all of which will help you choose both where you live and the quality of life you live as you age gracefully with or without a disability. So that's been what we've been doing right from the onset. 
had, had great engagement from all of you joining us and I really thank you for joining us once again today. Just as a quick housekeeping note before we jump in, please type your questions into the chat line. We'll do our best to answer them after today's webinar. If we can't answer your question, by all means, uh, we'll, we'll certainly set up a private Zoom call with you if you choose as well. And then hot off the press, for you that are joining us for the first time, those are you that are rejoining us, you already know about this, but we have an ebook gift for all of you at the end of this session. So make sure you claim that ebook at, at uh, the end of today's session on, it's all about, it's a renovation cost guide for accessible makeovers, but also we'll provide you with pros and cons with staying in your home versus moving to a builder or senior care center. And I will just tell you that I'm, I'm super excited about the content of this ebook. All of our panelists, and there's 11 total panelists that joined us through this last uh, four weeks. Everybody contributed to that uh, to that ebook, so it's, it's it's as objective as we could possibly make it from many many different professions. So do uh, ask for that ebook at the end of today's session. So let's get started of uh, today's session, February webinar number four of our five part series. Uh, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, joining us on today's webinar, we have Sean from Universal Access. Chuck from Home Care Assistant, and as your host, myself from my lifetime home. So once again, Sean and Chuck, welcome to the, today's webinar. So let's get started with today's session with Sean from Universal Access. Just a little bit of a background with Sean. Sean's the founder of Universal Access, and as I mentioned before, he's both living and conducting his business by experiencing uh, life as a, with a disability, as well as serving the accessible community. Sean's a regular contributor and speaker in many forums here in Calgary. You've probably seen him on breakfast TV a lot of times. And uh, it's all around topics surrounding accessibility to both communities and buildings, be they commercial or residential. I know Sean uh, audits and assesses communities and buildings, then scores and reports on their degree of accessibility. So uh, I know, Sean, you just were, were recently awarded uh, an amazing project from the federal government over in Edmonton. And I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your knowledge today on today's webinar. So let's just jump right in, Sean. Uh, today, our, our web, webinar topic is surrounding home resale for an accessible home. And Sean, you're living this world. Uh, so nobody, none of us can maybe truly uh, understand completely what you're dealing with day to day. But how might adapting our homes for accessibility affect the resale or value of our homes when we look to sell it or leave it as an inheritance for our children. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I think that there's a, a couple of considerations and um, preconceptions that obviously uh, we should quickly touch on just before um, getting into those particulars. But uh, you know, obviously the first one is adapting your home immediately creates an institutional or hospital-like feel, uh, and you know the uh ability to then sell it to uh the market decreases because you're then creating a niche within your household that you then have to sell to and uh paul based on you know the showcases that you've had and some of the work that you've done you can clearly see that that's no longer the case it's not that uh homes look medical or that they are now only built for uh a, sp a specific subset of um, you know, the demographic, but really building homes and following uh, universal design trends uh, and uh, the, the, the trends that are kind of growing within our communities already. So those open floor spaces, the Roman roll in showers, uh, the larger kind of grander doorways, and all of those aspects uh, fall within kind of the universal design and accessibility features that people look for in their home. Um, so we're really not talking about, you know, making your home feel and look like a hospital uh, or a long-term care facility. It really is just uh, adapting your home for uh, uh, a wider usability, uh, whether that's creating a um, stepless entry uh, that isn't particularly meant for people in wheelchairs, but really just for people that, uh, you know, want to optimize the ability to roll in and out of their household, whether that's with a stroller, uh, hockey bags, uh, whatever that might end up being, moving in and out. Um, it really allows for that adaptability and universal kind of uh, set um, that the home's able to, you know, incorporate. Uh, you know, everybody gets injured at some point in their life, whether that's breaking a leg, pulling a, a hamstring, running, whatever it may be. Um, 
there's difficulty kind of navigating your own household and by eliminating some of those factors uh, you create a, a, a space that's uh, comfortable for you no matter what um, experience you're, you're going through or whatever experience somebody you love or a family member may be having. So I think that really I wanted to address the first uh, component of that, which was we're not talking about, uh, you know, the wooden ramp that your Uncle Bob slapped on the front of your house or um, something like that. It really is uh, about finding that proper renovator or that uh, person that has the skill set to be able to incorporate adapted uh, features into the house without it looking like those are even there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that a, a really uh, well suited, inclusive and accessible home is one that somebody would walk into and not even recognize that those things are there unless they're specifically pointed out. And Paul, yeah. you have a number of pictures on your site that show exactly what we're talking about. So yeah. um, I would encourage people to check those out and really kind of get a sense of what, what that feels like. Um, so yeah. kind of back to the resale value and to get on topic here. Uh, sorry about that. Um, when looking at the resale of a home, uh, it, it kind of falls to that supply and demand component. And, uh, you know, one thing that becomes rather challenging is uh, finding that balance between uh, renovation or, you know, finding a home that's already renovated. And there's a lot of people that would uh, rather just move into a home that have those accommodations already in place. And by lumping that into their mortgage as they purchase the home, they're able to, you know, save the uh, challenge of a understanding what maybe they need to put into that home to meet the needs of their parents or their children or themselves. Uh, if they don't have that you know, uh, lens um, or the the trades people that have that capability of iterating and, you know, providing that insight for them. Uh, so we look at, and if we could jump to the next slide, we look at kind of what the population in Canada uh, looks like. And, um, you know, again, the lack of homes that are able to facilitate right. those types of needs. How many, uh, how many houses do we know uh, that have ramps, that have roll-in showers, that have all of these things um, already implemented or incorporated into that design. And it's it's certainly not a very high percentage or it's not uh, the same percentage as our demographics show here. Right. And so what that, what that means is that there's a higher demand for it. So it's less time on the market if properly um, identified by a realtor. It's a usually a competitive bid for that house because there's multiple interested parties then wow. going to a bidding uh, platform. And I, I can draw from my personal experience. Yes, I know uh, you, I can, Sean, you experienced that yourself, didn't you? Yeah, when we yeah. first met Paul, I was uh, buying my first home. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we went and saw two different homes that were accessible at two different times. And they were a number of months apart because that's how infrequently they came up mm -hmm. and became available. Uh, the first one uh, we went and looked at, it uh, went to a bid. It was around $500,000 and sold for $80,000 above wow. uh, what their original ask was. Hmm. Uh, the next one we went to was uh, a little smaller. Um, it was going for about four hundred and twenty, dollars and it's sold for about $25,000 more uh, than what they were asking. And that one, we actually went the weekend it was listed and by the end of the weekend, they had already closed the, uh, wow. the sale. So again, it really shows kind of that turnover. You know, those are my own personal experiences that maybe isn't the norm right. for every accessible house, but they were also houses that didn't look like they were accessible. So they didn't have those big wooden ramps or any of those types of things mm -hmm. on the house. They were really designed to be that kind of universal household mm -hmm. um, that just functioned as a everyday house could have been sold to anybody yep. in the general public. And really that's kind of where the value increases is when the house can be built for the 80%, but still service the other 20% that households are usually enabled to do so. You're now selling or marketing your house to over 90, 95% of the population as opposed to, 
you know, 75, 80% that, right. uh, that traditional houses are being kind of listed and, and identified as. Yeah. So I, I like think that, that, yeah, I like your, just interject, John, I, Sean, I like your, your, uh, your uh, inclusive kind of terminology, someone pushing a stroller, for example, up the walk into the home, carrying two bags of groceries, carrying an infant, uh, carrying a hockey bag, all those things require the same requirement, right? Larger doors, easy access, wider corridors, all of that. So I love that inclusive element. Yeah, I mean, proper lighting, proper ability to, you know, ensure that there's uh, safety um, and accommodation throughout the house. You know, one of the uh, um, largest injuries to infants is a uh, parent tripping and falling while they're holding the infant. Um, yeah. If you have certain aspects in that household that can help eliminate some of those factors, right. uh, you know, it's creating a safer household while also being able to accommodate a wider variant of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sean, more and more. Talk, can I segue just to interrupt? Can I segue into the next question? Because it, I think it, there's yeah, a really please, cool that actually fits perfectly. Because, yeah, the, the, you know, you talked about lighting this just as a perfect segue to my next question, which is, you know, what considerations need to be made when adapting our homes? positively or negative that'll positively or negatively influence the home care experience for both the caregiver and the individual receiving care. I know Chuck's going to talk about the home care side, but you're experiencing that, Sean. I mean, you just mentioned tripping hazards. Falls are the number one uh, injury for elders. But in your case, you see even mentioned uh, a, a parent slipping or, or tripping with a child in their hands. So tell us a little bit, if you wouldn't mind expanding on that a little bit. Well, and as, as, as Chuck can uh, address, um, you know, one of the largest challenges for caregivers is working in a home that doesn't properly support or um, provide adequate, you know, elements within it to, to facilitate somebody's needs or support the needs that they have. So that it then defaults to the caregiver to, you know, transfer somebody in an inappropriate setting or try and navigate in a space that isn't properly adapted to to accommodate uh, a little bit more flexibility and utility within that space creating probably a, a little bit of a higher uh injury risk uh, not only to the individual but also to their uh home care workers so making sure that those things are properly incorporated and uh making sure that the people um, doing the work, have that understanding and are able to convey those insights to you, as well as making sure that it's uh, properly suited within the house, that it's it's designed within it. It's not a bolt-on, it's not an addition right. to, but it really is part of the overall, you know, visual complement of how that space is being uh, utilized, but also, you know, perceived. Right. And that, uh, that goes back to the resale question, right, Sean? Because if it's integrated and it looks like it's part of the home versus a bolt on or this add on ad hoc deal, I mean, that's that's an element too that will contribute to resale. Yeah, it really does. It really does. When you when 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 it's done right, it's not something that people are gonna notice. It's not something that, you know, people walking on the street are gonna point out if it's a you know massive piece of equipment or, you know, a poorly constructed component on the front of the house, you're going to see that from any vantage point, whereas if it's a cleanly landscaped and incorporated path up to the front doorway that just no longer incorporates a staircase, but a gentle slope up, that's something that nobody's going to notice and, and, and probably not even realize until it's something that they need to use or, you know, makes it easier for them to get into that house. So like you said, Paul, whether it's, uh, you know, somebody with a, a stroller or somebody with, you see a lot more often the, uh, the traditional um, canes and crutches that people use when they injure uh, a lower extremity no longer being used, but it's really those Neelon scooters uh, that people are starting to utilize at a, at a higher frequency as well. So again, we see the uh, technology or the, the design of um, uh, equipment for people also following a trend of homes and spaces are becoming more accessible on, on an overall basis. Mm -hmm. So the equipment can actually change because you can put things on wheels, because you can put different elements onto uh, uh, 
different different uh, pieces of equipment, which sure. then again, um, homes and spaces can properly and adequately accommodate now. Right. So, right. and I don't think anybody's going to notice those kind of things until they're put in a position where they need it. Yeah. And then they're going to look back at their own house and be like, wait a second, what's going on here? Right. Um, right. So yeah, I think that really it's just the proper implementation of those design aspects. So I think some of the key areas are kitchens and washrooms, obviously, Paul, uh, and then entrances into the household. So, um, you know, those are kind of the main areas that a lot of people require a little bit more help or uh, support in. And, um, you know, I think uh, Chuck's going to be able to properly convey kind of what some of that stuff looks like and, right. and uh, you know, how it all gets facilitated and, yeah. and those kind of well, yeah, no, that's those. Those are great insights, and I know at our seminar back uh, in February, we talked about the invisible uh, component of proper design, and again, that all contributes to the resale value that we're kind of talking in the context of your conversation today. But you know, segueing into my my kind of my last question with you, Sean, this is maybe a, a little different than maybe some would expect would expect from this webinar, but there's there's conditions, there's lots of them where. Uh, if financing a renovation is something that's not attainable, are there other options, Sean, that will allow one to live at home and still receive quality home care without sacrificing comfort and all of that if, if they choose to live at home? Could you help us with that? Yeah, so I think, you know, it is a, it's a, it's a growing trend. I think COVID kind of brought to light a lot of risk associated with long-term care facility, and that's something that... Um, may end up becoming another additional consideration to people when looking at um, their options as either they age or as they see their uh, loved ones aging. And, you know, that active lifestyle, that, you know, intent to stay in their own home uh, is, is continuing to grow and, and even more so in that kind of multi-generational household component or uh, adopting kind of that, um, methodology of grandparents and, and right. their children and, and grandchildren kind of living under one roof and how all of that can be facilitated. So right. there are other opportunities. I think there's, uh, you know, and again, I think Chuck will be able to allude to these, but the self-managed care options or the, the different financial options in in-home care. And I think we'll start seeing a growing support um, through either government or different organizations uh, like accessible housing, uh, where um, they'll actually be able to help, uh, you know, provide resources or support to put in some of those accommodations and and have some of those amendments done uh, to the household to allow you to kind of live there, um, you know, for a longer amount of time or at least until uh, you can make a secondary decision. You're not deciding at that point based on uh, what's going to service your needs better. It's more going to be based on kind of your uh, communal desire, whether you want to be in a space of right, you know, multiple yep. individuals and and sure. aging individuals, well, or if you want to stay in your house with your loved ones and in a community you are already familiar with. Right. I mean that that's a great point you make, Sean, because I know there's been initiatives. Uh, you know, our our uh, current Calgary municipality really has 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 smiled upon secondary suites, and that's another example of being able to stay in your own home. We've done we're involved right now in a secondary suite conversion. We've got I think we had four on the go here in the last few months, but all of those options allow especially if you have a separate entrance or if you have a walkout you could have a, a, a pseudo caregiver if you will somebody that could do your yard maintenance and so forth that's living in the lower level and contributing to some care so lots of lots of cool options out there we could spend a lot more time just for in the in, in the interest of time i need to segue over to chuck but any last uh, little comments sean that you might be able to shed some light on for us uh really just kind of reiterating um you know the notion of that institutional household once some of those aspects are put in and um that you know with some of the other uh webinars you've had um with the suppliers and some of the equipment that is available to to put in um i urge people to kind of take a look at uh, your website and see some of the stuff you've done and uh 
you know, do a side by side comparison of an accessible home that you've you've modeled to a non accessible home and see if there's a difference. Can you tell what's put in? Can you tell why it's put in there and whether or not it's a a universal design aspect or if it's just kind of an a modern design that incorporates some of those components. Yeah, that's so true, Sean. That's a great, great point. I know uh, again back in our seminar in February, we covered that aspect, and that is kind of the builder's secrets where you know the open concept is not just an open concept for for no reason. I mean, obviously for growing families and the integrated household, those are all value adds. But for somebody that's dealing with a disability, those again are invisible solutions to a better lifestyle. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, Sounds Paul. great. Yeah, appreciate it. And uh, so all of you that are that are joining us here today, do visit Sean's website, uh, universalaccess.me. So universalaccess.me. Sean is a regular speaker. In fact, I think Sean, you're mentioning you're doing a, a, a nationwide webinar here on the Abilities Council, which is, I know you're near and dear to your heart. And uh, so thank you, Sean, for all the work you do in the accessible world, because it's not just for those dealing with, with, with uh, accessibility challenges, it's those of us who are carrying a grandchild or a, a load of groceries or pushing a stroller. They're all beautiful elements. Thanks, Campbell. Thank you. Appreciate it. Segwaying over to uh, to Chuck, and I, you know, Chuck, you've been hearing this conversation, and I know you've, uh, you're living this on a day-to-day -day basis with you and your staff, but, um, you know, we're going to do a deep dive today, a deeper dive than we did back in, in February and in all the areas that, that home care assistance can provide. And this, there's some myths surrounding this. I know I have been completely, uh, I've been, I've been, I'm in shocked in a good way. Um, in fact, uh, Chuck, as a side note, you know that I actually use your services for two of my friends that were in palliative care and just what uh, a level of service I discovered on the private home care side and the cost I was so so thrilled in a positive way. So I just really want to know, uh, you know, talk about how those costs compare to living in a lifetime home. I know that, you know, you're the president of the, of the local chapter of uh, the local franchise of Home Care Assistance Calgary. But in talking to you through this COVID-19 pandemic, you've seen a huge surge in inbound queries for your services uh, after COVID in the senior care home news. So let's let's start today's session by helping all of us first understand what your services are all about. I had no idea how much you guys provide, and this is private healthcare now, right? Private home you care, yeah. but you're also going to talk about AHS. So what what are the services that uh, that you provide for? for sure. Folks? Um, so thanks for that introduction, Paul. I just want to say thank you for inviting me to this uh, panel. First off, uh, I think it's very important, very timely right now. And uh, I hopefully some of this information that I can pass along will help some individuals out there make an informed decision. Um, and thanks, Sean, for the nice words. Um, also, um, thank you for that. So, yeah, so when we're talking about private home care, uh, you really have to think of it as two different blocks. There's public home care and then there's private home care. And we exist because of the public home care has some gaps in it. Um, so uh, Alberta Health Services does provide free private, or sorry, free public home care. Uh, and uh, typically right now they've reduced their services a little bit because of COVID, but typically what they do is they focus on ADL care. So if you're not familiar with that term, that's activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. And uh, so AHS will typically have um, I say AHS, Alberta Health Services, they will typically have uh, a caregiver come to the home and they'll focus more on um, bathe assist right now and some hygiene. They will also do things like, um, you know, medication or injectables and they'll do wound care. Uh, that's all free and that can all be provided by uh, Alberta Health Services. But there is a small gap or a large gap um, really when you look at uh, what we provide as opposed to what Alberta Health Services provide. So many of our clients, what we do is we initially get them started with um, the public side so that they get a file started uh, so that they can receive some uh, funding if possible. Sean had mentioned something uh, just briefly about self-managed care. So there are options of, of uh, using the public funded dollars towards private care. 
Um, so that's available. And, um, you know, later on, anybody can approach me about that. That's a different conversation, but right. there are, uh, available, um, for individuals out there to augment their care with public and with private. So what we offer is that we will also do ADL care, but we really focus on what's called IADL care, which is instrumental aids of daily living. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the home and uh, we'll have um, one of our nurses, they'll do a care plan or a consultation. They'll make up a big care plan and they'll find out where our clients need some support with independence. So that could be around meal preparation. Okay. Uh, so we can come in, we can do all the meals in wow. the home. We can do all the breakfast, uh, lunch. We can prepackage meals. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, we want our clients to eat healthier and to have fresh meals available. Okay. I might have to. I might have to hire you just for that, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't let my wife hear that. She's an amazing cook. But just to give her some reprieve. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so meal prep is one of them. Uh, obviously, we can do the other domestic duties in the home. So light housekeeping. That could be mm -hmm. laundry. Wow. Most of our clients are in a home uh, that they've built. This is where their memories are. And uh, un, you know, unfortunately, or fortunately. At the time when the home was built, usually the laundry's in the basement. Yeah. So it becomes kind of unsafe to carry that big basket of laundry down to the basement, do the laundry, then bring it all back up. So we can do that for our individuals, uh, for our clients. Uh, we focus on medication reminders. We do all the ADL work. So we do assist with um, hygiene and bath assist also. Uh, we help with ambulation. So transferring, walking. Uh, going for walks, you know, mm -hmm. going around, going outside, getting some fresh air, right? right. Um, you know, and uh, getting outside, you know, you know, you guys are doing great work and making those ramps, making it accessible for us to go outside, right? Yeah. So yeah. we talked a little bit about that. We do transportation. So if our clients need to get to the pharmacy or go see a specialist or an appointment, we can drive them there. Right. Um, you know, uh, another big, big piece of our uh, service is called companionship. And that's really, um, you know, a, a huge piece because a lot of times, um, you know, loneliness can creep in. Maybe not all the family members are around. Maybe the grandchildren can't come every single day, but we can be there. Right. Um, you know, we can provide some companionship. And we also focus a little bit on um, doing some cognitive exercises, too. So that's uh, something that when you're looking at, you know, public home care, and then you're looking at private home care, you can see that there's a gap. So right. essentially, Alberta Health Services is not coming in to do all those IADLs. They right. are coming in to do um, ADLs, but it's, it's at a short term. So most yeah. of our clients are longer term and need, you know, more than one bath a week or right. shower assist a week. So yes. Those are some of the services that we encompass. Yeah, no, that's that's so uh, so enlightening. I know when you first started, uh, we first connected a, probably a couple of years ago now, but but just hearing and seeing, actually experiencing your services with, I, like I said, a couple of my friends, uh, it's kind of how we got introduced. But um, I just seeing the the breadth of care that you provide, I, yeah. I talked, you know, I talked about this webinar uh, early on about the isolation component. So. You know, um, I've got a friend right now. Well, in fact, uh, the two folks that you took care of were both younger gentlemen that that uh, succumbed to their illnesses, leaving behind two widows. And those widows now have access to your home care. They're not they're not older folks necessarily. They're quite young, right. um, you know, uh, sadly. But nonetheless, I mean, things like isolation, companion care. What an awesome service yeah, it is. And you actually you touched on it a little bit there, but I just will say that. I, you know, in the picture, you'll see a senior here, but really our, our service encompasses disabled adults, children. Yeah. It can go from, you know, uh, postpartum depression that uh, somebody needs help with all the way to the senior side. So we can help uh, with independence in the home, basically in all those right. areas. And that's, yeah. that's so cool. Like I, you guys weren't part of that webinar, but just uh, last week or, or it's, I guess it's uh, webinar number two. Uh, we talked about the finance options. So ways to, if you don't want to touch your investments, how you can finance. And, you know, we've got a, a, a real cool solution on that. So some of you that are watching, by all means, uh, check out that YouTube channel. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the end of the webinar here today. But yeah, some great ways to fund 
and finance without dipping into your investments right right there so we'll yeah. talk about that but just chuck just segueing over to my next question in terms of uh, just in, in the interest of time uh, can you share uh, because this is a, a lot of people's concern is you know it and their myths what i've discovered it, it's it almost it must cost me a gazillion dollars to remain in my home versus moving to a care facility can you share those cost comparisons with us for a moment yeah, absolutely. So there's a cost comparison. So what we did is a little bit of some research here in Calgary and area. And um, it's really, you know, top of mind for sure on every conversation, especially a first conversation that we have, mm. um, is to compare the cost of maybe moving into an assisted living facility and or independent living facility and or staying at home, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a general um, chart that we've developed here, oh. but you can see like an average cost for an assisted living or independent living. And I'm saying average is about 5,200, let's say. Okay. Obviously there's lower, um, costs out there and there's definitely much like costs that are triple that, that are out there. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of an average that we're seeing. And then we moved on to maybe what that average annual cost would be. And you can see it's around 63,000. Now, if you compare that to something that uh, you can have our service come in and do some of that on an hourly basis. You're looking at probably around $3,100. Now, right. obviously, uh, if we're an hourly, you could be higher than that and you could be much lower than that too. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that's kind of, um, you know, like an average cost if you're comparing apples to apples. Right. Uh, what you want to look at though, is that if you move into a place, especially so, um, independent living facilities, they don't offer any care. It's, it's basically, you know, you're living in a, in a, in a condo or apartment size building, your right. meals activities are provided, uh, but there's no care that's provided really right. care that might be coming from Alberta health services. Mm -hmm. um, if there's in an assisted living facility, you, you are getting care, uh, but you're getting what we say is a one to 12 ratio. So that's one wow. caregiver for 12 wow. families. Wow. Okay. So you're not getting the one-to-one. -one. So if yeah. you, you can see the difference right there, if you're yeah. getting care from us, it's one-to-one. -one. That's the safest care you can possibly receive, right? right. Yeah. Um, and then if you look at that, you know, up to four hours, we have a minimum in our service of three hours um, or up to 24 hours, you know, right. in, in, a, in a facility, I guess, um, you're getting about an hour of care. Right. So this goes on to that next uh, column there. You can see estimated cost of personal care per month. Um, so if you extrapolated that, that money out for what you're paying for care, you're paying about $600, wow. or 60 there, but you're really paying most of that 5,200 is your rent. Right. You're not paying for care, you're paying for rent. Right. Where if you use our service, a private home care company, um, you're paying all of your money goes towards your care. Right. And none of it goes towards your rent because typically our clients, hmm. clients own their own homes. Right. Yeah. So, right. That's um, again, such a, such a myth buster. Again, just it's, it's, it's shocking huge. to me. To be honest, yeah. it's shocking. It just, it actually gives me goosebumps in the wrong way. I, I just look at that and, and that one to 12 versus one to one. I mean, there's so many options uh, the what you've just described. Just continue on, just finish off there. But uh, Chuck, these are, these are wonderful revelations, hopefully for all our listeners. Yeah. So really, I mean, I mean, for us, uh, cost is um, one of the first questions a lot of people ask. Uh, you can see that if you're planning to move to um, a different facility, that it's going to actually cost, it's going to cost a fair amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. You can start with services quite lower than 3,100 even um, right. with care for us. So, right. uh, and then you can, you know, we're flexible. You can have care increase as, you know, um, maybe your health may be decompensating. You might need additional um, care hours. So sure. you can increase our care hours, but it's yeah. always going to be one-on-one, -on -one, right? right? So I think that's the most important thing there. It's I think that's the biggest takeaway of all. And, and uh, do you have another slide to, to finish with, Chuck? Because that, does that uh, pretty much sum it up for today? Well, uh, this is just, you know, a, you know what is it we, we often get, like a common kind of question is, um, you know, what if I just hire, you know, somebody off of uh, uh, Kijiji or, you know, off the internet as a caregiver? And, yeah. and I wouldn't say the quality of care would be different, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
because I think that if you get a great caregiver, a great caregiver is a great caregiver, whether they're, whether they're with uh, agency or with um, public care or private. But sure. what you do get definitely is the added support that an agency provides. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in our agency and many out there in, in, in Calgary, you're getting a client care manager. In our case, the client care manager is a nurse. So you're getting a nurse overseeing the care. Right. Uh, you're getting a trained caregiver. So all of our caregivers are certified healthcare aides. Right. And that's something that maybe you want to ask if they have an HCA certificate. Um, we're a liaison, a home care uh, liaison. So we can advocate for our clients with mm -hmm. Alberta Health Services. Uh, we do have staffing in place. So we have a scheduler, we have employee care managers. And where that becomes important is that if somebody comes off of care, we can easily replace that person. So we got a very large team. Um, and so we can have somebody come in. So if they are injured or sick or yeah. they went on vacation, we can replace that. Right. So right. Um, I think the biggest thing <laughs> for hiring privately is that you have to protect yourself. You know, as an agency, we take all the liability. If you're going to hire privately, so you true. have to assume the liability then. So you, you better make sure that you have WCD coverage and you insure and you bond your yeah. caregivers that you have insurance for this. <clears throat> um, you know, and another thing that's very important is COVID screening. Right. Uh, so we screen before every single shift. Right. Uh, so you want to make sure if you're hiring privately that you're having a, a COVID screening protocol in place sure. so that sure. the caregiver can follow that. Wow. I mean, police checks, uh, yeah. vulnerable sector checks, you yes. know, we do all that. So, yeah, yeah so a, there's, a, there's a big difference there. What a bundle there. That's, that's yeah. an incredible bundle. And I, and I, in, in the interest of time, I have to move on. But, but sure. Chuck, is there another, another component that you'd like to finish up and kind of wrap up, summarize? No, really, I will just say that if you want to get a hold of us, find out any more information, we're right there, homecareassistancecalgary.ca. We're a okay. local company. We have a storefront that's on the Cloud Trail and Southland Drive. Mm -hmm. You can pop in to see us. We can provide some information there. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's great, Chuck. I mean, homecareassistancecalgary.ca is your website, so do check out. I know you've got a lot of resources on your website, too. I was, I was so impressed with the, the, uh, the dementia care, cognitive care. Yes. Um, some of the exercises you go through with, with some of your clients is great. But I do yeah. want to emphasize, too, to your point earlier, this isn't just for senior care. And, and, I, and I, uh, I, I mean, as an example, I told this story in another webinar. My wife uh, tore her Achilles tendons, both of them. I mean, it was just, it was so debilitating. And uh, so the care opportunity is not just for a senior, it's for somebody, exactly. you break a leg, you need a yep. respite care. If, if you're taking care of your spouse that's suffering or, or whatever, a child, it's such an amazing cross-section of service. that It they, is, it really is. It, it Like, honestly, we do post-op, hospital to home, but it, it never ends, right? Yes. The ability yes. to never end. So yes. Um, yeah, thanks, Paul, for yeah. doing that, uh, allowing me to talk a little bit about what's available there. But on my end, I'm going to say that you asked me a bunch of questions. Could I ask <laughs> you a couple questions back? Is that okay? That'd be fine. Sure. Yeah, go <laughs> <Okay>. ahead. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just start with, you know, uh, we're talking a little bit about cost right now. So I understand you might have some costs, uh, maybe some math around moving to one right. of these senior facilities or one of these places, uh, one of these senior villas. So uh, can you talk to me a little bit about that? So this is just a little bath that we did on your question, Chuck. And these are just basic costs, right? Everybody knows to sell your home. If you're going to move to a, to a villa or senior care center, you're going to be paying realtor costs. Maybe you can sell it on your own. That's possible. Uh, moving costs on average and then refinishing or refurnishing and purging. I mean, that, that, that number is extremely subjective depending on your taste and where you shop. But I mean, 32,000 bucks is an average kind of move just to move, not Amazing. the number that you talked about, the 5,300 bucks a month, or, you know, it could be four to six grand a month. This is just to move. So uh, yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, of, 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 of math there, if you will. And that's in that's the cost. That's not even the stress that you have to go yeah. through, right? Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I wrote that rolled off my tongue so quickly, right? Purging, refurnishing, yeah. purging. I've got clients right now going through purging because they're remaining in their home. And she just texted me this morning, Paul, this is painful. <laughs> yeah. It's, 
it's painful to purge, but she's staying. We're just purging enough so we can retrofit her bath to be completely accessible. So uh, even that, let alone an entire 30, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of, of accumulated goods you got to purge. Right. So Paul, uh, second question, just kind of follow up with that cost question there. Um, you know, in our service, we take care of the, the domestic side, the independence in the home with the caregiver and everything. But many of our clients ask, you know, about the exterior of the home. So, you know, my question, I guess, is if this is the forever home, do you know who does kind of general maintenance out there that can take care of the outside of the home? Oh, there you go. Great, great question. I mean, there's many organizations and I, I call them concierge services. That's a great, the great question because it's, it's probably, if I would say another myth busting uh, question slash answer is folks just don't know who to call. And, and so there are concierge organizations out there that will do this for you. You can manage it yourself. Um, you can, you can hire your own lawn, lawn care provider, your snow removal, your window cleaning, your power washing of your deck in your house, uh, window cleaning, perhaps inside and out, uh, furnace maintenance, all of that, uh, all of that maintenance, roof check, leaf checks, uh, caulking and, and painting and all of that to maintain your home. But uh, there's organizations out there that actually provide this, but I just want to do a little bit of math. Uh, again, Chuck, I, I, I'm, I'm not really a math whiz, but I am big on value. Right. So when I look at this is this is a document that we provide for our clients and it's a it's a concierge service that we provide for for our clients and it's a complete package. But when you look at uh, the moving moving costs, I just did some quick math here on the relocate and all of that. We we said maybe 30 grand, 32, so 15 to 32 grand. So if you look at that, uh, just adding some quick costs. So these are these are actual costs that we provide for our clients that you see in this document. Uh, things like uh, lawn care might be at lawn and snow care might be 150 bucks a month. Uh, furnace, furnace cleaning and furnace maintenance could be 100, 150 bucks a month. A thousand dollars a year for handyman type services where maybe it's a window that's leaking and needs caulking or a repair or you know just something to keep just like maintaining your car. You don't let your tires wear out. You replace them before you have a flat. So. Unfortunately, not a lot of people do that. That was a home we find. But anyway, you know, two grand in sundry repairs. Uh, you you add all that up, and uh, it it's maybe five five hundred bucks a month. Uh, and you look at this entire suite of concierge packages here. That's five hundred dollars a month, and uh, it, it's an enormous amount of of work that that would be provided for that. But my point is, that five hundred dollars a month would give you five years of hands-off maintenance-free living just in your moving costs. So if you yeah. take that 30 grand of the higher end, the 30 grand of the all-in bundle of concierge, you're, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna take five years to break even. So kind of a, I think that's pretty amazing value. Yeah, it is. You really can live your life in your lifetime home, can't you? Definitely. You can. And it's just unfortunate that, um, you know, maybe people don't know who to call, but that's the entire purpose of this webinar. I brought in, like I said, 11 panelists that all of you are, 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 are pros in your respective fields. But this hopefully is just bringing education and hopefully aha moments like it did for me. Oh my goodness. I can hire Chuck for that. Sean can certify my home. We didn't even talk about that, but Sean can certify my home as accessible and that potentially could go on the MLS listing to increase the value of my home. This is crazy. Who yeah. knows this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Well, really, okay. Really so, quick. Oh, really quick. I don't mean to interrupt yeah. truck, but yeah. one thing I just want to ask, uh, not that it's a, a, probably a big consideration this year, but for families that are traveling over the winter or that, you know, uh, uh, go south like anybody uh, should be doing, um, <laughs> these things take place even if, we're not at home, you'd come and do all of these services, you know, peace of mind while we're away. These kind of things are being looked after on a regular ongoing basis, even if. Yeah, well, that's a good question, Sean. In fact, our last webinar we did was with the home automation side. So how do we ensure that our home remains gorgeous and, and automated yet accessible? So Mike covered a whole uh, kind of call it vacation mode automation component that we can add, but Further to your question, yes, we look to your to your point to to uh, Chuck, bonded, licensed, insured. I mean, if you don't have those three things in place, you're taking a massive risk. 
in bringing anybody into your home. So we have, obviously we're bonded, licensed and insured. So we can come in to your point, Sean, we have a lockbox system. We sign in, we sign out. We, we, we even suggest putting uh, the Nest doorbell onto your home uh, so that you see us coming and going. If it's not us, you know, it's some, it's an intruder. So you can, you can even say hello to us as our tech walks up to your door and we do the vacation check. But uh, great question. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah perfectly. Thank yeah, sounds good, Sean. Well, let me, let me just, uh, Chuck, I just, if I can just jump into a couple more sure. uh, resources for those that are listening. Uh, again, uh, like I say, the, the sad uh, disparity of, of just points of reference to who to call just going to give you a couple of websites all of you that are listing here today and you're welcome to to reach out to me privately and i'll have i'll be happy to share these but there's an organization in the states called village to village and it's called uh, vtvn uh, so, sorry vtvnetwork.org so vtvnetwork.org and it's an organization that has come to calgary so we are now as uh, far as I know, uh, uh, my lifetime home and the Pinnacle Group are the only contractors in Calgary that are that are that are kind of partnered this way. We're a vetted contractor to the Oak Ridge Seniors Association, which is oakridgeseniors.ca. So www.oakridgeseniors.ca. Uh, so we're a vetted contractor. This organization called Village to Village actually vets services. We went through a whole vetting process before we were allowed to go on their website. So that's another another uh, uh, resource, so CARP as well, so C-A-R-P, Canadian Association of Retired Persons, Kirby Center, 55 plus resources, and then of course our website, My Lifetime Home, has a whole suite of resources there as well. Again, fully vetted, bonded, licensed, insured professionals that come to your door and no upfront subscription, so we don't have a subscription for you to be part of that. It can be like your service, Chuck, where it's for three hours or it's for four days or or whatever you want, just pick and choose a la carte. Right. Okay, yep. amazing. Hey, just, uh, I guess my last question is, Paul, at the beginning of this um, webinar, you talked a little bit about a pros and cons document that you had um, that associated to some costs. Would, uh, how would we get a copy of that? And, um, you know, um, is that available for anyone to access? Yeah, great, great question. And we kind of, uh, as you said, we referenced that at the, at the front end of today's webinar, but it is, uh, all you have to do is reach out and ask for it. So um, it's, it's available to all those that are registered on the webinar and actually attended. So if you're an attendee today, please just, uh, just go on the chat line and ask for your copy. It, what, what I really, uh, Chuck, I have to say that what I'm so excited about in terms of this document, it's, it's a 20, I think it's a 20 page uh, ebook. Yeah. So we, we took all the panelists, uh, including yourself and Chuck, or sorry, the Sean and, and others uh, from our, our seminar back in February and, and, and compiled this. I referenced, I cross-referenced this with your cost comparisons, Chuck, on the home care side. And so we're all speaking the same language. It, I, I'm really, I really hope everybody that listens and those that ask for it really understand how objective we tried to be. Uh, you know, this is about educating. It's not about pitching you on our product. This is about giving you the best possible education. So yeah, please ask for it. It's, a, it's an amazing resource. It goes through every pro and con that we could come up with, over 11 of us, uh, trying to understand pros, cons. And there are con, there's pros and cons for both, right? So uh, keeping that objectivity. So yeah, thank you. That's available for all that ask. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, appreciate the questions, <laughs> Chuck, too. I know that uh, it's been, been fun to banter between, uh, between you and, and Sean. And I, I think yeah. as I summarize a little bit from today's webinar, we're, we're out of time. But um, Sean, you talked about the visitability. So I call it visitability, which is you know, somebody that's carrying a, 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 an infant or pushing a stroller or a, or a hockey bag, not just someone in a wheelchair. So uh, that whole element and how it can be invisible. We covered that on our last webinar. Uh, Chuck, just talking about the suite of products that are, or the services that are available from organizations like yours and AHS. So let's not, not, let's not forget, AHS is an amazing resource. But Sean, you talked about uh, resale and how the whole idea is to ensure that what you do to your home is not institutional and the Uncle Bob handyman deal. So 
<laughs> Hopefully yeah. there's no Bobs listening. <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, I think those were, those were very insightful elements from you two gentlemen today. And I, and I really want to say how much I appreciate both of you coming on. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you kindly. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Uh, for sure. Thanks for putting so, all of this together. I, it's been fun. It's really been fun. It's yeah. the fourth of five uh, webinars. Uh, just to summarize for all of you that are on the, uh, on, this, on the webinar today, we have our fifth one coming up next Wednesday, same time. But we're going to do, be doing a, a summary. So uh, do join us for that. And uh, these are going on our YouTube channel. So uh, if our moderator could put that onto the chat line, I don't know if she can or not, but uh, on, our, on our YouTube channel, you'll find all of that. So Pinnacle Renovations. Uh, .ca is where you find that. But nonetheless, uh, again, we're going to be covering that summary of all of our, of our last four webinars, including today's next week. So join us then. Thank you for joining us. Have a great week. And again, Sean and Chuck, thank you so much for joining us today on this webinar. Thanks. Have an awesome day, guys. Take you care. Bye-bye now. Bye.